I'm uh, Lynn Harvey. So Lynn the Hunter Harvey. I'm um, 37. In six weeks time I'm going for um, a European title belt. Absolutely crazy considering that I'm only pro three years. I only start boxing seven years ago. At 30 years of age I one day I'm a single mother with a young child, never been to a gym, never boxed. All of a sudden I join a boxer size class, fast forward seven years, here I am about to fight for a European title. It's absolutely crazy but amazing at the same time. Um, well, I was very late getting into boxing. Um, I actually didn't start boxing until I was uh, 30. So um, my local, in one of my local clubs was running a um, female boxer size class um, over in uh, Trinity Boxing. And um, I just wanted to go over and um, see what it was about and just um, get fit and tone up like a lot of women do. And while I was doing the um, boxer size class, there was um, a ring and there was some sparring going on in the ring in the same room. So I was like, uh, what are they doing? And they were saying, no, that's not nothing got to do with this class. They're, um, they're training for a white collar. Um, a white collar fight. This was at the time when white collar was only starting out and there was white collar um, charity fights on every weekend. So I was saying, well, you know, can I do that? And they were saying, no, they're they're already five weeks into training into an eight week thing for this um, white collar. So I was saying, well, I'd still like to do it. And they were like, there's only three weeks left. And I said, I'd still like to do it. So um, they let me do it and they gave me a place in it. And um, I'd only three weeks to train, but um, I did it and I, I got the head thumped off. Me. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't uh, that wasn't a great experience. What happened that night was it's just I don't know what it did to me it kind of I was mortified I was just I just set something in me and the next morning when I woke up I was just kind of thinking right do I go back to this club now and hide my face or do I actually go back and join it properly and actually learn how to box properly so that's what I did I went back then um I had a black eye and everything after that after that fight. So I went uh, I went back and um, started training properly and actually joined the club and got me um, boxing cards uh, and stuff like that. And I said to them, um, you know, give me a year. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be an Irish champion. And they were like, people were kind of like, you know, what's this thing? What's that she mean? Like she she's thirty. She's um, I just said it's going to be an, a boxing champion. So within a year, I was the um, Irish uh, novice All Ireland champion, um, and then the second year, I was the intermediate uh, Irish champion, and my third year then I was the elite, um, the the elite Irish champion. So it was a dream the way it happened. Now in saying that, it was nothing a dream like I was training like absolute animal. You know, I was. I was over there in the morning, I was over there in the evening, I was training full time, so I got totally addicted to it. And I just loved it. And boxing just gave me something that I just never had before. I just got totally addicted to it. After I won the um, the Irish the Irish elites, then so that was as high as I could go in in my country. Um, I was I was invited to go and box with the Irish team away in an international um, competition, and I and I said no because I I'd, I'd made it clear from the start that that wasn't my goal, wasn't to join the Irish team or you know um, go and try and go to the Olympics and all. That's not something that I ever wanted or anything that I ever even thought about. Um, it was just a personal thing that I wanted to do for Lynn, just for me and just from a, a, a little challenge, a personal challenge for me was to be the best in Ireland. And I just, I didn't want to take a slot on the team that I didn't want and where somebody else might want it and might give their left arm for it. And I just, I didn't want to do that because I didn't feel I'd be, I'd, that I'd be true to myself and you know, at the time, there was people who 
um, weren't happy with me and, and thought maybe it was um, disrespectful or unappreciative for the for the opportunity but I stayed true to myself and I said no I'm not going to do something that I that's not in my heart to do. Recently I've heard that a couple of the people who did say that have since said they respect me for doing that and that I was right to do that and actually took a lot of guts to turn that down. So after that I took some time out um, after I won the, the Elite Zen. I took the t some time out and I was, I was in some fitness classes and stuff at the time and then I don't even know what actually made me think about going pro because I, I just like... At that stage, there was there was only one um, female pro in the country. It was Christina McMahon, and she wasn't active at the time. So I I had nothing there to kind of even inspire me. I wasn't. I I don't follow boxing. I wasn't following boxing. So I just I was getting signs. I don't know. I was just getting some signs from somewhere just about going pro and it kept coming into my mind and normally with me if I'm sitting there just doing nothing or whatever and something comes into my mind by itself that's usually something that is going to happen or needs to happen if I'm not sitting there willing it and wishing it if it comes to me just when I naturally when I'm sitting there doing something mundane you know that's usually something that I need to pay attention to because it comes to me when I'm kind of just in a relaxed uh, state and that did come to me and I was getting signs all over the place and even someone messaged me on Facebook that I didn't even know saying Lynn would you not think about turning pro and I was saying I actually was thinking about that and I, I felt like at the time I was like who am I to even dare say that I'm thinking about turning pro. I didn't feel even entitled in any way to be even thinking about that. But I was like, you know, feck it. Um, who, who I could have said the same thing about me winning an elite Irish title as well. I didn't even know how to go about it and I didn't know anybody even in the game. I didn't even know any professional boxers at this time. So I just, I think I, I googled like um, what to do to turn pro in Ireland. Like so ridiculous. Like, and, and I got put, I got linked up to the Boxing Union of Ireland, which I never even heard of. And there was, it was somewhere where you could get an application form and I emailed them and asked them how do I apply? And they sent me a form and I was like, Oh God, okay. <laughs> so I got the form and um, filled it out and sent it thinking that they probably, I'll probably never hear back again. And they replied saying that they, that I was successful and I would like, I could apply for the license or whatever. So um, I suppose because I'd won the elites, I more than qualified to do that. So then I just realized, okay, you have to take it this far. Shit's getting real. Let's go and let's go and do this. You know, I didn't even know a, a pro boxing gym at the time or any trainers. I had, I had no idea. So um, that's how it came about. But it's very uh, unorthodox. But that's like most of my life. Every, nothing really goes the way every, everybody else does. So... When I first went pro turned professional, I, I knew it would suit me because um, professional boxing, the style suits me better. I never would have been a very high level amateur. I'm not the most technical um, boxer. I'm not the most flamboyant on my feet. Um, I'm getting better, but I definitely pro professional boxing would suit me better. I found that I um, definitely slipped into it quite easily because it suits me better. Um, I think professional boxing um, takes certain kind of character that I, uh, characteristics that I believe I have, like um, just a lot of heart, hard work, perseverance, you know, um, things like that, that I have, that I have in bucket loads, you know. So um, uh, back in the early days, when I, when I started off, you know, it, it was quite easy adapting to it. The hardest part was uh, waiting to get a fight. I was, uh, by the time I decided um, to turn professional, 
Um, I think I was a year training before I actually got my fight and even at that I had to practically beg I remember I had to practically beg Tony Davitt to give me a slot on the show <laughs> been a year I was absolutely itching to get going I was training five days a week um, twice a day for a year and I, and I had no fight so um, I remember there was a show happening and Tony Davitt I knew Tony Davitt from the amateur days and um, he was he was uh, co-hosting co-running co a show um, in the stadium and I said to him, he was over in my club, um, I was over in a different club at the time, he, he came over and I was like, uh, Tony, what's the story with the um, with show, can you get me on the show? And he said, Lynn, it's completely jam-packed, it's full, I'm sorry, I can't get you on the show. And um, I just said, you know, you have to get me on the show. I said, I'm itching to get going, I promise you I'm going to sell loads of tickets, you won't regret it, get me on the show. He goes, Lynn, I would if I could, I can't, it's full. I said, Tony, put me on the show. Uh, you won't regret it and he did squeeze me on the show and it was amazing it was amazing I sold so many tickets the place was on wheels it was just absolutely amazing experience so finally then I got to make my debut it was just such an amazing feeling coming out there was just so many people there and it was just it was still it's still one of, one of my best memories to date was, was my debut After the debut, it was a year again before my next fight. This was the hardest part, was training so much and knowing as well that, you know, I'm not, I was not, I'm not saying I, that I was old, but like, I wasn't getting any younger and I really wanted to get this show going on the road, you know what I mean? It's not like I was a teenager and I had loads of time. At this stage, I was 35 you know, so I really had to get me get me skates on. So I was feeling I'm running out of time. That's what I'd be feeling. I was running out of time. So to wait a year for my first fight, and then wait a year again for my second fight, really slow going. And that's definitely the hardest part of professional boxing is the inconsistency or uncertainty of when you're going to get a fight. So that's the thing I struggled most with in the early days of um, professional boxing. It was a year out of the ring um, what hadn't been active and I was matched with a much heavier girl. I, I didn't actually see the girl before the fight. Um, she was um, she didn't show up at the weigh-in so I didn't actually see her weigh in and none of my team were there so I actually still don't know what she weighed at this date but she was huge. So um, I didn't see her till the night of the fight so um that that fight didn't go well. That's the one loss that I have. Um, really experienced, um, much heavier, much bigger girl than me. Um, it went the six rounds. It was fine. I did the six rounds, but uh, I lost on points. So at the time, obviously, I was completely devastated. Um, it it was it was a huge blow because it was only my second fight, and um, you know, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to win your first two in inverted commas. You know, you're supposed to win your first few. But a lot of people get a handy fights for the first few, you know. I just think I was thrown in uh, way too deep too soon, especially after being a year out of the ring. Um, I couldn't have been expected to perform at my very best for that. <laughs> Looking back on that fight now, I don't look at it as a bad thing because I have so many stoppages on my record that, like... Even to have that loss, to only to look at who I lost to and how big she was and the fact that I went the distance actually doesn't look like a bad thing at all. So um, that just kind of uh, cements in my own mind how tough I actually am. You know, I already know I'm tough. And the fact that that I went through that fight and 
um, didn't get stopped and uh, and got good through the six rounds and came out um, still fighting. And I actually picked up more towards the end. Actually does show how tough I am. So I don't even look at that experience as a negative anymore. So, um, but after that fight, um, you know, I felt I needed to make some changes with um, where, I, where I was training. So I just wanted to make some changes. I just felt that I needed a new team around me. So um, I moved at that time. And the next year then, which was last year, 2017, um, I, in 2017 then, I had three fights that year. Three great fights, um, really nice fights and appropriate. Um, I had an appropriate comeback fight from the, the loss and um, a couple of appropriate step-ups then in level as well and three nice wins. Um, I really enjoyed that. So. Call the stop of this bout in round number three at one minute, 40 seconds. Declaring your winner, fighting out of a red corner, oh! But then um, towards the end of 2017, I just, um, there was stuff going on in my personal life and, you know, it, the boxing had slowed down. I had three fights before the first half of that year and I had been getting told that I was getting signed with a certain uh, company and then they weren't coming through and then um, I had stuff going on in my personal life and stuff that was meant to be happening wasn't happening and you know, I got I got really, really stressed out and I just, towards the end of that year, I suffer with my moods anyway, you know, my moods would go up and down and um, I really have to look after um, my health and my mental health, make sure that I am strong and towards the end of that year, I just felt everything coming on top of me um, and I just, um, just one time, one night, I just got really stressed out, and I just said, "Ah, oh, I'm done with this." And I kind of just maybe just said, "Ah, oh, I'm done with this." But looking back now, I should have just maybe not said anything. But maybe in me, I just kind of went and said that I that I was finished anyway, and I put it out there because that's how I felt at the time. I'm done with this, you know. I just felt like I've just had enough of this. I'm just. I'm too stressed, I'm getting let down all the time and I'm just, I'm just, I just want out of this.